Welcome to Sunday morning. Welcome to Bike Racing Without Mercy. We're going to take on the Bologna TT course. I've just had about an hour and ten minutes of zone two by way of warm up ahead of this. Bit of an experiment to see if a fasted training for an hour or so pre-race followed by a few calves a little bit of caffeine ahead of the race and maybe some carbohydrates during the race will improve my placings we'll see just going to make sure the sound's okay Seems it is. Okay, turn that off. Now, I think I've learned also how to use Zwift Power, or oh, sorry, Zwift Companion in the race. I just need to stop my GoPro camera Wi Fi overriding the camera, sorry, the, the Wi Fi on my phone here. And then I can have Zwift, power, uh, Zwift Companion up during the race and maybe even use the power ups, which would be another little addition. There's not much going to happen for about another uh, 20 minutes because uh, Bologna doesn't start until then. Because I haven't live streamed for a while, I just wanted to get everything up and running and working, make sure everything was okay. So if you've got any questions on training or nutrition or anything like that, don't hesitate to ask more on the nutrition side I'm still finding my way on the training side of things <coughs> sorry sorry I have my uh, in-game chat covered up morning Josh morning Wesley hi Jane hi Chris happy Sunday hope Paul's going well I've been experimenting with this um, polarized training that Ed Laverack has been talking about on his uh, channel. And when he was um, down in London, he told me a bit more about it. And so basically, I'm either racing. I had a, I had a race yesterday outside, a Cat 4 race. Or doing a Zwift race or a CV Arcade race, you know, probably twice a week max for a race. Then a couple of hard interval sessions. And everything else on the bike is zone 2. And the idea being that the zone two doesn't give you any fatigue, it gets nice mileage under the belt, you focus on your pedaling technique, all that kind of thing. But because it doesn't create the fatigue, it leaves you fresher for the hard intervals. And by bringing up the power in hard intervals, ultimately that will also bring up and drag up your zone four power and zone three power with it. And apparently, I've had this from a number of different sources before even talking to Ed. This is how quite a lot of um, people who really do know what they're doing in terms of cycling and training. And um, so it's worth giving a go. See if it helps improve the racing performance. I'm going to be super helpful to like the video, if you like it, that is. But as I say, not much is going to happen now until 10 past 9 when Bologna race starts. It basically boils down to a couple of nasty and hard efforts. Um, up the, uh, I think it's two or three kilometer climb. Very steep. You know, gradients up to 17%. Uh, yeah, um, Chris, it's, it's going to be in um, 15 minutes. So, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, not much to see until then. Apologies for starting it a little bit early, but I was really wary about all my live stream technology not working. I've got a new computer as well. So, 
I'm not the most technical of individuals. The level of concern was high. So Josh, I saw one of Chris's live streams, but you've just started racing yourself outdoors. How did you find it? Hey, Lord team. You look like you might be in um, Russia or the Ukraine. Good to have you on board. Oh, Jane, does it still sound nasal on the mic? Is that any better? Well, this is what I was asking um, Ed Wesley. Um, because I said, look, um, I figured that this kind of polarized approach might work for a pro who's kind of training anyway, I guess from 15 to 20 hours a week. But I only have maybe on a low week five, I'm oh, still nasal, a low week five hours, one second. Oh, is it better now? Sorry. There's a lag. Is it better now? I've just reset it for a second time. I'm going to wait until we have an answer. Okay. <laughs> I've just got a WhatsApp from Jane. It is better. Anyway, so Wesley, I was saying, um, I was asking Ed, if you're time constrained like I am, and most of us are, in all honesty, who you know, can't devote our time to cycling and recovery, does polarised training work? You know, with really anywhere from a low of five and a high of eight hours a week for me to train and race. Um, I asked, surely the zone two training isn't gonna be as beneficial as kind of sweet spot or three times 15 minutes, that kind of thing. And Ed's very categorical on this that, and you can check out his, uh, his videos. There's a, one on his January training and then there's another where he and I had a chat in his car in my car sorry but the zone three and four training is kind of especially the zone four mildly uncomfortable and actually three times 15 two or three times 20 minutes at your threshold is quite hard for the body to recover from and so by dropping that kind of stuff doing the zone two which leaves you fresher even if you're not doing that many hours of zone two but going really hard on your efforts and intervals, i.e. 40 20s, 60 30s, 5 by 5 minutes, all that kind of stuff, he's categoric that this is what drags up both your top end power and your ability to be really snappy at big, big climbs, that kind of thing, but also it drags up your threshold. And that's why I'm going to give it a go. Hey, Jason, thanks for joining. Um, I'm a banker, I'm afraid, but I'm a banker for a lovely little bank that focuses on the tech economy. I VC back startups, entrepreneurs, that kind of thing. And so it's really nice to be a part of lending to these cash burning, loss making businesses, but also businesses that are also profitable, but that are growing and really creating a lot of jobs across Europe. Um, and for my sins, I do have to admit, I used to work for the Royal Bank of Scotland for 20 years. And obviously it was bailed out by the government, but I gotta say, it was a lovely bank to work for. And um, I don't regret that. In fact, quite the opposite. I'm very proud to have worked for them. Um, but 
22, 23 years in banking. It's not as much fun as cycling, let's put it that way. I'm just taking on um, some carbohydrates pre the race. I haven't eaten any solid carbs because you don't want to be digesting food at the same time as you're putting down a big effort because the big effort requires a lot of blood and oxygen to be transported around the body and any kind of digestion is really going to impair that. So in this drink, I've got a carbohydrate mix called branch chain cyclic dextrin. And basically, these are very small molecules for carbohydrates, smaller than your typical sugar. And so they're quickly and easily absorbed into the bloodstream. There's also a bit of caffeine in there, plenty of water. A oh, nice one, Jason. You're looking after the high net worth individuals you get to see a very different perspective on life there, I'm guessing. Whereabouts do you live in Birmingham? Or near Birmingham, I guess. I'm quite nervous today. Because it's a while since I've had a Zwift race. I've had a couple of CB arcade races and they are super difficult but they're a lot of fun because you have to corner and there's cross winds, head winds, tail winds, side winds, all this kind of stuff. The power ups are quite different and boy um, the cornering is difficult. I, you have to break sometimes ahead of getting into the sharper corners and definitely slow down, lose momentum or you come off the track and if you lose the draft it feels like it does in real life, so I'm getting absolutely destroyed on CB Arcade. Yeah, hey Wesley, I'm, I'm looking into kind of that myself in terms of a good polarized training program. I'm actually gonna um, work with Ed Laverack, who's a coach, just to help me out there because I like the racing but obviously the racing is also eating into the recovery. And so I'd like him to kind of help me figure out how I do a live stream and a Cat 4 race and what, whether it's one hard interval session or two hard interval sessions a week. But basically, thus far, I've been doing about um, probably two or three hours, maybe four hours of zone one or two over the last two weeks, probably zone two in all honesty. And then um, a couple of one hour, kind of 40, 20, five by five minute sessions. And then um, a couple of 50 minute to one hour races. Oh, yeah, I need to put my fan on. That's right, Chris. Ah, oh, Solihull. Yeah, that's a not, uh, I know quite a few people uh, from the Royal Bank of Scotland who live in that area. Jason. Give me a second, let me uh, just move. Hey Chris, now I'm afraid I've not been to Australia. It's definitely um, one of the places that's on a mine and Jane's must-do list. Oops, sorry, bear me a second. Sorry, I'm just mucking around with the screens here. Um, my dad um, just went out there for three weeks, uh, not this year, last year for his um, anniversary and cannot say enough good things. And I hope everyone's kind of coping as best you all can with the fires. We've been watching aghast from here. Right, I'm gonna join the event because sometimes there's a lag.
Okay, everybody's got. <laughs> yeah, no, I've I've seen that from um, some of the YouTubers who live in Australia. The hills, the climate, the climate not in the middle of the summer, but the hills and the climate look amazing. Definitely, when we come to Australia, I'll be figuring out. You know, is it three or four weeks, and definitely hiring a bike. Hey Mark, how's it going? Thank you very much. Happy Sunday. I'm not sure many, how many Cat A's are in this race, how many Cat B's, but what I'm hoping to do There'll be a hard start as always, but stay in the front, grump, the, front, the front group. Take it reasonably easy on the flat and hopefully have a couple of good climbs. That's the plan. I'm sure that's everybody's plan. All right, I just dropped back the power a little. Finish the carbs. Oh, cheers, Chris. I appreciate the recommendations. I think it's going to be a good year or two until we get out to Australia because I've got a couple of um, teenage kids who still occasionally even want to come on holiday with me um, but um, I think it's one for Jane and I yeah hey Mark just give it your best and invest on the, the climbs hey Jason Thanks for joining and appreciate that. Definitely. I watched Ed Laverack do this um, on Friday night on his live stream. He was putting in six to seven watts a kilogram the whole way up the climb. Needless to say, I'm not going to be doing that, but I am going to be going all in on both the climbs. Right. Got two minutes to start. Yeah, 16 minutes. I think I'd be pretty happy, to be honest, with each kind of lap of the time trial course being 16 minutes. I think I've got it once before under 16 minutes in a previous live stream. I had to go very deep for that. I intend to go deep today, but you never know if you're going to have a good leg day or not. And maybe... Even though I'm only two weeks into it, some of this polarised training is going to pay off. Legs are feeling okay, but they haven't really been above 200 watts. Hey Lord team, you seem to be on a kind of multiple message relay. Not sure what's going on here. Yeah, we'll do, um, I reckon it'd be about I think it's through about eight minutes, maybe nine minutes from now, Chris. It's going to be about eight minutes to get there. We've got a minute till the start. Maybe not even that. Maybe seven minutes, but it, yeah, definitely enough time to go away and do something more productive.
Okay, here we go. Hey, Goose. Hey, Nils. How are you both? This isn't going to be the impressive display of power that you saw on Friday night. Not looking to do anything at all spectacular on the flat bit. Just stay with the bunch. Ooh, now they go. Hey Kevin, thanks for joining. Appreciate that. Now I'm determined to have a better draft. Ha! <laughs> Ed level. Ed level, right level of what? I'd love to put down kind of why is it doing this? Sorry, Sorry my uh, backups software provider just giving me an unwelcome message. Cheers, Jason. <laughs> Bit of a strange start there. I'm trying to figure out which is my avatar. I always like my level four blue jersey. Now, I was saying I really am. Um, hey, Josh, thanks for rejoining. I was saying I really want to get better at drafting. I'm expending way too much energy on Zwift races. And when I'm outside, like yesterday in my Cat 4 race, you know, when you're leading laps, you are investing massive amounts of energy. And when you're in the bunch, you're saving tons. So at the end of a race, I actually have some punch. Um, we had a climbing race yesterday and my normalized power for the hour was about 290. And my um, average power was about 230 odd. Sorry, just mucking around Mr. Lee, one second. This is a nice civilized start here. Oh, hey Mark, thanks for joining. Hey Johan, thanks for joining. Just trying to take it nice and easy here on the flat and then cane it, hopefully cane it, up the ascents, times two ascents. Feeling good at the moment, but obviously it's been a very civilised few minutes. Yeah, drafting is the name of the game here, but not on the incline. Oh, very careless off the front. Yeah, cheeky draft. I still haven't got that Tim Fullford ability to just sit at 200 watts on the flat, or 230 watts or something, and not get dropped. But this is a bit better. A nice little C here of yellow and blue starting to emerge just beyond my little screen there.
weighing in today at 65 kilograms. Hey Mike. <laughs> yeah, thanks for delaying it, I appreciate that. I'm hoping so. Squats and cycles. I've forgotten your name for a second there. We used to be um, members of the same gym box, everybody. Yeah, Tim is the master of power control. Yeah, very tame start. I am blessed, Jason. But that does mean that the incline is gonna be horrid. It's clearly, I think, like me, people saying, I wanna go as hard as pos on both the climbs. Yeah, I wish I had massive amounts of torque. <laughs> Indeed, hashtag blessed. Any easy start to a cat A race is welcome. But that definitely means pain. We're not far off the bottom of the hill now. When we see the petrol station on the left hand side. And I need to avoid wussing out on the hill. <sighs> I'm not gonna burn matches chasing people that have got more than me, but I am gonna put down as much as I possibly can. A chance of a breakaway depends how good the climbers are. The blob will be too strong at the moment to even contemplate, but after the first climb, we'll know. Getting the cadence up to ridiculous levels, north of 100. Oh, really sorry here, that goose. I hope, I hope you do find full health on both the knees. That must be beyond frustrating. Yeah, the second ascent will be making me cry too. Yeah, yeah, if I blow, I blow, Stucco, Stucco. Thanks, James. Yeah, Chris has been very generous and giving me some plugs. Appreciate you checking them out. The Tim Fulford draft. I shall come back to that in a minute, Niels. The level of concern is now high. This is quite civilised. Maybe not. Hey Mark. Well I can't sustain 400 for too long.
These two are very strong. If they can sustain this. Gonna blow here. Cheers, Tuko. Cheers, Jason. Cheers, Jane. Cheers, Chris. Sorry, I forgot your name. My apologies, mate. Have a good day. Oh. Quite happy with this so far. Yep. That's what I'm telling myself, Stucco. Cheers, you're not done yet. Shout it out. in all kinds of trouble.
Oh. I was happy with the climb. 15.40. I think that's a PB for the first lap. Oh. Oh. Yeah, this is exactly how I descend in real life, Niels. 77 kilometers an H, cornering like Vettel. All the clock. Oh, thanks for the support on that. It really helped me push that a bit harder. I didn't have, I mean, that's like a 20 second PB or something like that for me on this course. I didn't have what it took to follow the front guys. I'm hoping that a couple of them may drop because sometimes on these climbing races, you get people trying to do a PB on the KOM once, benefiting from the draft as much as they can on the climb and then they drop. Here we go. Uh, yeah, I didn't spin or just draft off in the German Grand Prix like Vettel. Although I nearly did yesterday onto the grass. Thanks, Mark. Ah, oh. just okay. Yeah, trying to bring the heart rate down, but also try and keep the watts up a little bit. The worst thing about that climb is you know you've got it the second time, which is what we were all talking about at the beginning. Cheers, Chris. It was emotional. But definitely, I think my power was up there. Yeah, two laps, horrid. All right. Yeah, agreed, Niels. I mean, I love the McLarens, but Ferrari's where my heart's at. And boy, can they still defeat from the jaws of victory. Cheers, Joe. Yeah. That was a confidence builder, hopefully. I don't think I'll be quite as quick the second time, but I'll try. I'm a long way off. Probably better off riding in a group. But the group's going quite slow. I'm in no man's land. Yeah. Lando and Saints, uh, Science, Carlos Science. That's a great pairing. That's true. Bro magic.
bro chemistry. <clears throat> Love to see the McLarens continue to improve. You see, I'm putting down it's like a four watts a kilogram and I'm being reeled in. I'm going to let myself get caught. Otherwise, they'll take me on the hill. Hey, Chris. Yeah, you're dead right there. Yeah, bromance for science and Lando. Yeah, Chris, you're dead right. This is where my racecraft or lack of it always manifests itself, never knowingly want to not burn myself out unnecessarily. I don't want to back off too much because I always find it really hard to kick start the engine. Yeah, you're right Niels. Try and bring the heart rate down and keep it in a kind of 3.7 to 4 watts a kilogram range. Spinning here, maybe one extra gear. Really trying to maximize each pedal stroke, pushing down evenly and pulling back in the circle. Conserve energy. Keep the cadence high. Yeah, I reckon 250 odd nails. Yeah. Two fifty to two seventy. Morning Darren. Happy Sunday. We just done one quite emotional ascent of the Bologna climb. Second one is looming. In about eight minutes time, I reckon. Yeah, I agreed on the physics. The more I ride and race outside, the more I realize But it's still super fun.
Oh, here we go. If only I could U-turn now and catch on with them. <coughs> Here we go. Halfway. Oh. Legs are wearing along nicely now. That's why CV Arcade is so cool. The physics seem more attuned to real life crit racing. Although I'm not an expert on such matters, it just, when you lose the draft or have the draft, you kind of feel it more on CV Arcade. And then all the cornering and stuff, road position, etc. You obviously can't take the line you always want in a crit because someone else has it. So you're never able to deploy nice smooth power either. Well not never, but you're not guaranteed to deploy it. Cheers Darren. I think the intent is to go hard. I seem to be holding this group behind. No, I haven't, I haven't yet watched the Pro-Ams. It's the wattage. Unbelievable. Hey, Tony. Happy Sunday. Thanks a lot. I appreciate that. Yeah, my first ever podium finish. A hill finish as well. It's Hog Hill. It's got a really nasty climb. Better suits me as a lighter rider. Yeah, I only need one more point to get to Cat 3. Hoping to get it next weekend. Yeah, that was the idea, Mark, but I reckon I'm holding them. Oh, I was holding them. Yeah, holding them at about 20 seconds. And I'm not killing myself. K. Dean looks like he or she may be quitting, I'm not sure. Diesel engine's well and truly on here. Is it eighth, is it? 
Thanks, Mark. Oh. I tell you what, you and me going up a small incline. Oh, it's decline now. At 42 kilometers an hour with 280 watts in real life. Here we go. 0%, 244. Right, let's go 260 watts. There we go. Yeah, 260 watts, 1% incline, 40 kmh. No way, on a lovely flat tarmac in real life. And please remember, if you haven't subscribed and you're watching this, and maybe you're not in a live chat or whatever, please do subscribe, get involved in the live chat. Love to hear from you. Like the video, if you like it, that is. Yeah, that's a, is that a draft, isn't it? Is that a draft or an arrow? It's an arrow. Let's get my mouse over it. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do here, Niels. Also, Kay Driscoll may implode on the climb. <clears throat> Thanks, Agnes. Yeah. Thanks, Johan. Appreciate that. Good to see you, Agnes. Yeah, Aero, got it. I'll, put, I'll deploy it at the very end on the uh, flat a bit. Come on, heart rate's a little high here. Right, I'm not going to be talking too much. Yeah, cheers Jen. Focus. Here we go. Hammer time coming. Trying to build a bit of speed here. The trick Neil's taught me. Come on, man up. Okay, I'm gonna gradually build the power. Well, that's the intent.
Cheers, Niels. Cheers, Josh. Well done, Niels. Cheers, Monsieur Ruder.
Oh, dear me, thank you very much, Niels, praise indeed. Yeah, it's a great result, Joe. Thank you, Monsieur Rouleau. No chapter three today, stone and goat instead, but loving the new chapter three YouTube. Thank you so much, everybody. Oh, I gotta be honest with you. Definitely on both the climbs, the fact that people are providing encouragement and all that kind of stuff, it just gives you that extra 5% to kick on. And definitely, I think that's my two best back-to-back -back climbs at Bologna. I'm quite happy with the average power there at 2.75 over the 44 minutes because there was a big freewheeling bit where you're putting down zero watts and that drags the average down. So hopefully on Zwift power, there'll be a higher normalized power, as I say, in a crit because of the, the sort of the acute differences of being in the draft versus on the front and pushing on the hills and obviously freewheeling down the uh, some of the slopes you know my average power would be like 233 in a 50 to an hour crit normalized to be about 290 285 to 290 oh right let me have a sorry just got my breath back hey sam terry James, Agnes, Mark, Johan, Paul, Joe, Darren, Monsieur Ruda, Niels, Gus, Chris and Chris. And Mark as well. And Tony and Dean. Really, really appreciate the support. And thanks Niels, yeah. Yeah, I was, I was happy with that to kind of maintain that gap. At the end, I thought that um, a couple of the guys behind might just claw me back a little bit. But um, I kind of, I always knew that I paced myself well on that second climb and had a little bit more in the tank. Albeit the wattage did drop a little bit at one stage. I think that was more about gear selection. Yeah, I wish it was solo with me on the front though, Mark and Niels. <laughs> Thank you, Monsieur Rida. Uh Yeah, I think um, I've got a, um, soon, in, probably in about a week and a half's time, I'm launching a top five Zwift training programs that I've used to kind of get me to this level of fitness. But, and there is a big but in it, um, you'll also see there's a little twist to that video because while I was filming it, um, I, as I was saying at the very beginning of this live stream, um, I watched Ed Laverack's uh, January training um, sort of discussion on his YouTube channel. And there he was talking about polarized training. And um, you'll see in my Zwift training schedule, up until recently, lots of 5x5, five five, really good, 4020s, really good, some over and unders, again, pretty cool, but also quite a lot of sweet spots and 3 times 15 2 times 20 And what Ed Laverack's saying um, is, um, as I was saying to Wesley earlier, he's saying, actually, if you're doing too much of that sweet spot, or too much of that um, three times 15, two times 20, all that kind of thing. Actually, especially the three times 15, two times 20, that zone four stuff, it's mildly uncomfortable, but it's over a, very, a sustained period of time that's quite long, and actually it's pretty hard to recover from. And that means when you come to do your really hard, intense, but shorter efforts, your five by five minutes or your 40, 20s, that kind of thing, you're not quite as fresh as you ought to be, and therefore you're not getting the maximum training benefit during the intense sessions, and therefore, you know, people who are really good at cycling, i.e. the pros and 
elites and you know cat twos all this kind of stuff a lot of them are doing a lot of zone two because that's easy on the body easy to recover from and leaves you fresh to go even harder on the five by five minutes the 40 20s the 60 30s all that kind of thing and in doing so you bring up your top end power but the benefit of doing that is it brings up um, your zone three and zone four power as well and so that's basically the twist as a little preview there um, because then I'm now going to start a polarized training program and hopefully show people whether that kind of brings me up from what is really kind of 4.2 to 4.5 watts a kilogram over the hour um, to hopefully something more um, more um, uh, impressive I guess <laughs> oh, thanks Mark yes my mum my mum and dad were big believers in manners um, and you know, hoping um, well, yeah, and that's how I want to keep the channel to be honest because um, the cycling community is a beautiful community it's one of the most welcoming lovely communities um, that I'm aware of in this world I'm, I'm really sad that I found it so late in life age 45 or 44 and um, I've never known a community treat each other with such respect and care and share experiences and how to do better and all that kind of thing and I think um, you know that's what's so uplifting about all of this anyway unless anyone's got any more yeah excessive sweet spot I mean the same for me I, I you think you're doing good work there um, but actually it's probably um, fatiguing you from the top end stuff especially for um, you know people that want to be much more focused on um, sprint work uh, like yourself Mark because um, you know you, you're, you're basically impairing your top end power cool all right well look everybody thank you ever so much have a lovely sunday um look forward to seeing you all again soon in the live stream remember to like the video if you liked it um, and subscribe if you're watching and you haven't um subscribed um but in the meantime whoever you are and whatever you do please remember to live thrive and subscribe sorry that was a really unslick ending to all of this but thanks a lot